I wanted to know how writers use different verb tenses in each of the academic articles which they write in for biomedical journals. So I asked myself in the introduction and the methods, the results, and the discussion, how do people use verbs in different ways? So I made a corpus, which means a big collection of different articles based on biomedical journals, such as Cell, the Journal of Biological Chemistry, Cancer Research, Scientific Reports, and more, about 45 journals in total. And I'd like to share with you the data that I got. But first of all, I'd like to explain to you what I mean by verb tenses. Now, there are important verb tenses in biomedical writing more than others. And I'd like to show you the ones that I want to focus on. The most basic is called the past simple. This is an event that happened before now. In our example sentence we see our results showed that there was an increase. Well in daily life I might use the same grammar to say something like I ate cereal for breakfast this morning. That's an event that was contained in the past before now. That's what we represent by this green dot. The, most com the, the second most common verb tense is called present simple. And this is something that happens before now, and now and in the future. Here's our example. The figure shows that there is little change in absolute cell numbers. If I was going to give an example in daily life, I might say, I eat breakfast around 7 o'clock in the morning. It's something that happens before and now and probably in the future. It's just a typical thing. Water boils at 100 degrees. Our next most common verb tense is the present perfect. Our example sentence, the vaccine has been shown to induce an immune response. This is something that has been true in the past over some length of time and is likely to continue into the future, although it's not guaranteed. If I say in daily life, I might say, I have been an English teacher for 15 years. Now, that's definitely true in the past. And I hope it's true in the future, unless I do something really wrong. It's probably going to happen. These three are the most important. But let's continue. The present continuous is the fourth most used verb tense in biomedical writing. And it represents things that are more closely related to now than the present simple. Let's read an example. By this time, when the layer is already showing a depletion, the population shows no signs of sprouting. The key is that it's probably related to some other event, in this case of the example, that is, the population showing signs of sprouting. In my daily life, I might say something like, These days, I'm watching a really good anime about the function of the body called Cells at Work. Let's continue. The past perfect is a little bit complicated. I sometimes call it the double perfect because it contains one event that is in the past plus a second event that happened after that. Here's our example. Previous studies had shown effects at these concentrations. This author is trying to say that since previous studies 
had shown effects at these concentrations, we conducted our experiments at similar concentrations. And now we are reporting them to you, the reader. In daily life, I might say something like, I had already bought my plane ticket when the pandemic was declared, so I couldn't fly. It's the double past. There's two events happening in the past, and the event which is contained in the verb phrase is further back in the past. The future simple is somewhat easy to understand, I believe. Future experiments will show whether these effects can also be reached in vivo. Or in daily life, I will probably visit my parents in about two years. You know, I can't go this year because of the pandemic and, you know, who knows? I suppose it's going to be two years from now. By the way, there's two ways to make this. The most common in our situation is will. You can say be going to, as in future experiments are going to show whether these effects. But actually in academic biomedical writing, almost nobody uses be going to. Just don't do it. It doesn't sound good. The final example we will use in today's presentation is the past continuous, which is confusing. Let's just read the sentence. The patient who was receiving the drug had a reduction in activity at the end of the administration. Well, I would suggest you don't worry about this too much. It's very similar to the past perfect. And in fact, you can probably exchange it in most cases. However, I'll still give you a daily example. I was riding my bike to work when I saw a big traffic accident. It really surprised me. Okay, this is rare and I just list it because it's going to come up in the next few slides, but don't worry too much. Now I would like to show you some data. And these will be verb tenses in journal articles by section, starting with the introduction. In this chart, you can see that I have assumed the be verb tenses will substitute for all verbs. In fact, if you did this plot with all verbs, it would look slightly different. But please trust me that the general trend is the same, whether we use only be verbs or all verbs. In this case, the X axis represents different verb tenses, as you can see by color. And the Y axis represents percentage of coverage of each tense within the section of the journal article. In this case, the introduction. To be clear, the be verb in the present means is, are, and be, while the be verb in the past means was or were. In these biomedical articles, there is no example of am, the be verb present am. Continuing, we see how the verbs are used in the methods section of the paper. In stark contrast with the introduction, the methods section is dominated by the past usage. And the results section is somewhat similar to the methods, although not to the same extent, as the present tense is often used in the results, while the discussion pattern closely resembles that of the introduction. Now, to those familiar with the academic journals, the principal results are probably not so surprising. The introduction and the discussion are dominated by the present tense, while the methods and results are dominated by the past tense. 
This may contribute to reports I've heard from students that the methods and results are easier to write than the introduction and discussion. Nevertheless, I'd like to highlight that in every section, 9 out of 10 verbs are the present simple or the past simple in every section of journal articles, with the remainder being mostly dominated by the present perfect. In other words, the dominant three verb types are responsible for almost all verb tenses in academic papers, and it's actually possible to write a paper without the remaining four verb forms. These data are probably due to the fact that the introduction and the discussion are talking about what can happen. Namely, based on the results produced by the current study, something good can change, or somehow we can affect a difference in the scientific literature. It's more present-oriented than the past. On the other hand, in the methods and the results, it tends to be more about what the present study has accomplished and what do those accomplishments mean. But let's look a little bit deeper into these small data because it's remarkable that in the introduction and discussion, the present continuous is used at a somewhat high rate. An example sentence could be, the effects are experiencing a decline. Something which happens when the... and so on. However, if you don't want to use that grammar, it can basically become a present perfect. It's not that big of a difference. You could say, these effects have experienced a decline, something which happens when blah, blah, blah. So yes, it's okay to use the present perfect, per, I'm sorry, the present continuous, but in many, many, and most cases, the present perfect will be okay. It was also remarkable to notice that the methods section is not very diverse. Almost every verb in the methods section is used in the past tense. This shows that the methods section really is just about describing what your team did in a specific time period. On the other hand, I was impressed by the fact that both the methods and the results use the past perfect at higher rates than the introduction and discussion, which implies that it's important to indicate the timing of events in the methods and results. In other words, what happened before something else? To be very clear about a step-by-step -step process, using the past perfect can sometimes be important. Moving on to the discussion, it's remarkable that the future tense is used more and really much more in the discussion than any other section, implying the need for future research. Overall, these data show that the way to write the introduction is relatively similar to the way to write the discussion. And then the method section has similar verb tenses to the results. And this is something to keep in mind as you write your manuscript.